Origin just humiliated itself trying to compete with SpaceX. While the media celebrates their $190 million NASA contract to deliver a rover, here's the brutal truth they're missing. SpaceX didn't even bother bidding. Why? Because they're playing a completely different game. Blue Origin is celebrating landing a golf cart on the moon. Meanwhile, Musk is building a 15-story reusable giant that will carry astronauts, haul 100 tons of cargo, and literally become the first lunar outpost. One's doing science experiments, the other's colonizing worlds. Let's dive right in. Let's rewind to September 19th, 2025. Blue Origin announces they've won a NASA contract worth up to $190 million. The mission? Deliver the Viper rover to the moon's south pole by late 2027. Media outlets rush to frame this as Blue Origin catching up to SpaceX. Headlines screamed about competition heating up. But here's what those headlines conveniently ignored. SpaceX never even submitted a bid. Why would the world's most advanced space company skip a $190 million payday? The answer reveals everything about where this race is actually headed. V-I-P-E-R stands for Volatiles Investigating Polar Exploration Rover. It's a 450-kilogram machine, roughly the size of a golf cart, equipped with a drill that can dig one meter into lunar soil. The mission is straightforward. Land near the Noble Crater, deploy the rover, and let it explore for 100 days searching for water ice. Blue Origin will use their new Glenn rocket to launch the Blue Moon Mark 1 lander. After a three-day journey, the lander will touch down within 100 meters of the target site. Temperatures there plummet to minus 230 degrees Celsius. The rover will traverse roughly 10 kilometers, gathering data with infrared and neutron spectrometers. Scientifically valuable? Absolutely. This data will help NASA identify water ice deposits critical for future missions. Water means oxygen, fuel, and drinking water for astronauts. But here's the uncomfortable truth. This is a delivery mission, not a game changer. And that's exactly why SpaceX walked away from it. When NASA issued task order CS7 under their Commercial Lunar Payload Services program, SpaceX was eligible. They had the technical capability. So why didn't they compete? The math is brutally simple. That $190 million contract, SpaceX generates that kind of revenue with just a handful of Falcon 9 launches. They fly rockets almost weekly now, sometimes multiple times per week. Their focus is locked on something infinitely more ambitious, landing actual humans on the moon for Artemis 3 in 2027. From a strategic standpoint, diverting resources to compete for a rover delivery makes zero sense. It's like asking a construction company building skyscrapers to bid on delivering furniture to a single apartment. Sure, they could do it, but why would they? This decision wasn't about capability, it was about priority. And the gap between what Blue Origin is celebrating and what SpaceX is building reveals everything. Let's talk specifications, because the comparison is almost comical. Blue Moon Mark I can carry several tons of payload for uncrewed science missions. Even the upgraded Mark II version, planned for Artemis V in 2030, can only transport four astronauts and two to three tons of cargo. Starship HLS? It's a 15-story building that can carry 12 crew members and up to 100 tons of cargo. The internal volume is 1,000 cubic meters. That's not just bigger. It's a completely different category of capability. But here's the twist that changes everything. Musk's vision isn't just to land Starship and fly it back. The plan is for Starship itself to become part of the lunar infrastructure. After delivering cargo and crew, these massive vehicles could serve as habitats, storage facilities, or power stations. Instead of throwing away billions of dollars of hardware after each mission, you're building a base with every flight. Blue Origin is running taxi service. SpaceX is building a city. Now let's address what's really at stake. NASA officials, including former administrator Jim Bridenstine, have publicly warned that if Artemis 3 slips behind schedule, it'll be SpaceX's fault. These aren't baseless concerns. For Artemis 3 to happen in 2027, Starship needs to prove it can reach lunar orbit, perform orbital refueling, something no one has ever done, and safely land humans on the moon. That's barely two years away. But here's what the critics are missing. 
SpaceX is moving faster than any space program in history. Right now, Starship launches every two to three months. Earlier this year, SpaceX set a record with 16 Falcon 9 launches in a single month. If Starship is meant to eventually replace Falcon 9, hitting that kind of rhythm is absolutely achievable. And they need to, because orbital refueling will require multiple tanker launches for every crewed mission. Gwen Shotwell, SpaceX's president, recently confirmed that Starship version 3 will fly late this year or early next. The orbital refueling demonstration is targeted for next year. They're not just talking about these milestones. They're actively building toward them. What separates SpaceX's approach from everyone else's? They're not just building vehicles. They're building the entire supply chain for a lunar economy. At their Starbase facility in Boca Chica, Texas, they've expanded production dramatically. Two giant mega bays now feature rotating work platforms and automated welding robots. A new gigabyte is under construction. They're building another gigabyte and another entire factory in Florida, effectively doubling manufacturing capacity. Four launch pads are being developed in parallel. Pad B at Boca Chica, one at LC-39A in Florida, and two more at SLC-37. At LC-39A, they just completed installing both trench bucket sections, critical structures that channel the searing exhaust from 33 Raptor engines firing simultaneously. They're even constructing a horizontal transport barge named You'll Thank Me Later to move vehicles between Texas and Florida so those new pads can start launching before the Florida factories are operational. This isn't the behavior of a company worried about falling behind. This is all in commitment, but infrastructure alone won't get Starship to the moon on time. SpaceX faces real bottlenecks and they're attacking them systematically. Engine production is the first challenge. More launches mean more Raptor engines. Each Starship needs six Raptors. Each super heavy booster needs 33. At monthly launch cadence, that's nearly 470 engines per year just for launches, not counting test articles. They're expanding test facilities at McGregor, Texas, adding test stands to run multiple development campaigns in parallel for Raptor 3. Test site capacity is another constraint. After the Ship 36 incident, SpaceX upgraded the Massey test site to support Block 3 vehicles. The plan includes adding a second static fire position, so if one mount is damaged, there's a backup ready. They're also considering building a separate static fire field specifically for super heavy boosters. Transportation logistics present a surprising challenge. At Starbase, moving these massive vehicles relies entirely on Texas State Highway 4. Every vehicle roll shuts down the road for 48 hours, disrupting local traffic and sparking pushback from the community. The fix? A new private road, a three to four kilometer stretch on SpaceX owned land, cutting directly to the launch area. Transport time could be cut in half, Highway 4 stays open for locals, and Starbase can hit the launch cadence needed to become the world's premier spaceport. None of this happens without the people making it real. SpaceX has already built apartments and a gym for workers at Starbase. The vision is to transform it into a genuinely livable community with food courts, shuttle buses, and more housing. Better living conditions mean happier, more productive teams. It's not just good ethics, it's good business. Let's talk about what makes or breaks the entire mission. Orbital refueling. This capability has never been done before, and it's absolutely critical. Right now, every spacecraft is limited by the fuel it carries at launch. Orbital refueling changes that completely. For Starship HLS, it isn't optional, it's mandatory. The physics are unforgiving. Getting to the moon requires more fuel than Starship can carry in a single launch from Earth. The solution? Launch multiple tanker Starships, rendezvous in low Earth orbit, and transfer liquid methane and oxygen to the HLS vehicle until it's fully fueled for the lunar journey. Shotwell identified this as the toughest challenge ahead. SpaceX is targeting a demonstration next year. If they pull it off, it'll be as revolutionary as Falcon 9's reusability was for launch costs. Let's give credit where it's due. Blue Origin winning the Viper contract is genuinely impressive. Their new Glenn rocket successfully reached orbit on its very first flight. The Blue Moon Mark 1 lander is complete and ready. They met NASA's strict requirements for a late 2027 landing schedule. This is Blue Origin's second commercial lunar payload services mission. 
They're building a track record of reliability, and that matters. But context is everything. NASA's strategy has always been to diversify contractors. They've done this with Mars missions, spirit, opportunity, curiosity, perseverance, all built by different teams, all successful. The Commercial Lunar Payload Services Program follows the same philosophy. Build a robust commercial ecosystem where multiple companies contribute according to their strengths. Blue Origin excels at precise, smaller-scale missions. Viper plays to those strengths perfectly. But winning this contract doesn't threaten SpaceX's position any more than a successful Mars rover launch threatens SpaceX's dominance in launch services. SpaceX's standing is built on achievements that seemed impossible two decades ago. Nearly 550 successful Falcon 9, booster reuses with over 99% reliability, breaking Russia's monopoly on crewed spaceflight, deploying Starlink in 115 countries, flying astronauts to the ISS routinely, they've fundamentally changed what's possible. Rockets that land themselves, missions launching weekly, costs slashed by orders of magnitude. Blue Origin has impressive technology and serious backing, but they're still fighting to catch up to where SpaceX was five years ago. When Elon Musk reportedly laughed at suggestions that Blue Origin could replace SpaceX on Artemis 3 if HLS falls behind, he wasn't being arrogant. He was recognizing the absurdity of comparing a company that's flown hundreds of orbital missions with one still proving its launch vehicle can reach orbit consistently. So what's actually happening here? Blue Origin isn't trying to beat SpaceX to the moon with Viper. They're establishing themselves as a reliable partner for specific mission types while building toward their own crewed capabilities with Blue Moon Mark II for Artemis V in 2030. SpaceX isn't worried about Viper because they're focused on Artemis III and the infrastructure that makes sustainable lunar presence possible. They're building the highways, not just driving on them once. The space industry isn't a zero-sum game. Multiple companies succeeding is exactly what NASA wants. Competition drives innovation, redundancy ensures mission success, and diverse approaches solve different problems. But let's not pretend the capabilities are equivalent. One company is delivering a rover. The other is building the foundation for humanity's expansion into the solar system. Those aren't competing visions. They're different scales of ambition entirely. And that's why Blue Origin's celebration, while earned, looks less like humiliating SpaceX and more like playing a completely different sport. This is exactly why SpaceX didn't bother competing for Viper. They're not playing the same game Blue Origin is playing. While one company celebrates landing a rover, the other is quietly building the infrastructure that makes Mars colonization possible. Orbital refueling, reusable lunar landers, production facilities churning out starships. These aren't just technologies for Artemis III. They're the foundation for everything that comes after. The moon is just the proving ground. Every starship test, every refueling demonstration, every infrastructure upgrade, it's all preparation for the real goal. Mars. SpaceX isn't racing to the moon. They're using the moon to perfect the systems that will carry humans to another planet. Within the next two years, we'll see orbital refueling demonstrated, Starship version 3 flying, and the first lunar landing tests. The cadence will keep accelerating. Blue Origin secured a valuable mission, but SpaceX is building the economy that makes space accessible to everyone. Here's my question for you. Will Blue Origin's focused approach ultimately prove smarter than SpaceX's all-or-nothing strategy? Or is Musk's vision the only way to make humanity multi-planetary? Drop your prediction in the comments. I read every single one. If you want deep analysis like this on space breakthroughs as they happen, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. We're Space Hub, and we break down what these developments actually mean for the future of space exploration. One company delivers cargo. The other rewrites what's possible, and this is just the beginning.